Welcome to our Time Out podcast. I'm Ken Loudermilk, Senior Chief Engineer for Titus. Today, we'll look at underfloor air distribution and identify important characteristics and challenges you should be aware of when designing these systems. Underfloor air distribution systems, often referred to as UFAD, utilize the cavity beneath the raised access floor as a supply air plenum. Condition supply air from an air handling unit pressurizes the cavity to a static pressure that is typically 0.05 to 0.1 inches of water. The supply air is then delivered to the space by means of floor outlets mounted in the raised floor system. There are several important items to address when using the floor cavity as a supply air plenum. The first item of concern involves plenum leakage. There are two major sources of leakage in a UFAD system. The first, that which escapes through the access floor into the space, is referred to as type 1 leakage. This leakage does not compromise the system's ability to cool the space. However, excessive type 1 leakage can result in overcooling and compromise controllability of the space temperature. Type 2 leakage bypasses the conditioned space and thus serves no benefit to the conditioning of it. This leakage usually passes into adjacent wall, partition, or column, and eventually short circuits to the return air path. Measures to minimize type 2 leakage, such as close detail to sealing all vertical plenum boundaries, should be clearly detailed in the building construction documents. Finally, Conduits that feed zone thermostats should be sealed in order to prevent inaccurate measurement of the room air temperature. Another issue with using the floor cavity as a supply air plenum relates to thermal decay. Sensible heat from warm return air passing below heats the slab and is subsequently transferred to the supply air plenum, resulting in an increase in the supply air temperature as it passes over the slab surface. It's not uncommon to see temperature rises of 6 to 8 degrees as the supply air migrates to the far reaches of the plenum. As supply air is generally injected near the center of the floor plate, the perimeter zones, which demand the most cooling, end up being served by the warmest supply air, often resulting in perimeter zone airflow rates more than twice than that which would have been required by a ducted overhead system. To make matters more challenging, the magnitude of this heat transfer is very difficult to predict as there is usually a thermal storage effect that results in a time-delayed supply air temperature response that is dependent on a number of uncontrollable factors. These may include the building mass, thermal separation of the slab from the fenestration surfaces, and numerous other contributors. It should be noted that the delivery of warm air by means of the pressurized plenum is not recommended as it will heat the slab and delay the effect of any subsequent cooling of the space. Instead, any space heating should be done outside the pressurized plenum or with fan terminals whose discharge is directly ducted to the supply air outlets they serve. In order to minimize the slab heat transfer effects, designers often utilize air highways. Air highways are conduits that are placed within the plenum to contain the supply air until it reaches a point nearer the building perimeter. They may be either sheet metal or fabric and are intended to limit the supply air exposure to slab heat transfer effects. This results in cooler perimeter zone supply temperatures and thus lower perimeter zone airflow rates. Although interior supply temperatures are higher due to increased exposure time, Significantly lower cooling demands afford reasonable airflow rates, while the warmer supply temperature often increases occupant thermal comfort levels. Another way to minimize the effects of thermal decay is to reduce the sensible cooling responsibilities of the plenum air. This can be accomplished by ducting the supply air directly to the perimeter zones or by using decoupled sensible cooling devices such as passive chill beams. The coil in a passive beam uses chill water delivered at or above the room dew point temperature to assure that no moisture is removed and thus no condensation occurs. Convective air currents flowing along the perimeter walls and windows travel through the beam's coil where sensible heat is removed. 
This allows the supply airflow rate to be reduced to that needed to maintain adequate space dehumidification and ventilation. The resultant airflow rates are similar to those employed in interior spaces, which are typically less than six-tenths of a CFM per square foot. It also eliminates the need for air highways that can impede relocation of cabling within the plenum, which is usually the reason raised floor systems are employed to begin with. Supply outlet selection has a significant effect on the cooling and ventilating performance of this system. Although UFAD room air distribution characteristics are not identical to those of thermal displacement systems, they can be designed to provide some of the same operational benefits. Most UFAD systems utilize swirl type supply outlets. These diffusers enhance the mixing of supply and ambient room air. This promotes rapid dissipation of velocity and temperature differentials as the airstream ascends into the room. Once the supply jet velocity is reduced to around 50 feet per minute, further mixing with room air becomes negligible. The airstream then ceases to rise and a distinct boundary level forms. Room air below this boundary becomes well mixed, while convective air curtains associated with heat gains above ascend naturally and create a thermally stratified zone of ambient air in the upper portion of the room. The distribution of convective heat gains has a marked effect on thermal stratification and subsequently space cooling airflow requirements. Sensible gains from sources within the mix zone are largely distributed within the occupied level of the space. These gains affect occupant thermal comfort and thus must be considered when determining cooling airflow requirements. Convective heat gains from sources above the boundary level are isolated within the upper portion of the space. Since these plumes do not draw air from the mix zone, they do not factor in the space airflow calculation. This is a typical UFAD temperature gradient. There's a small temperature variance between ambient air at the floor and that at which the boundary layer forms. Above this, ambient air temperature increases due to the unidirectional convective heat plumes traveling through it. UFAD supply airflow rates are dependent upon the differential between the room supply and return air temperatures. Vertical projection of the supply air jets has a significant impact on cooling airflow rates. As the vertical projection increases, more heat gains are captured and deposited in the lower mix zone where they must be considered in the supply airflow calculations. The vertical temperature gradient corresponding to a greater jet projection might look something like this. Notice that the capture of heat gains within the mix zone results in less stratification and thus a lower return air temperature. Jet projection also affects ventilation of the space. When the projection does not exceed the occupant's breathing level, most of the occupant's respiratory contaminants are picked up by their associated rising convection plumes. These contaminants are then conveyed by the heat plume to the upper level of the space where they can be removed without exposure to other space occupants. ASHRAE Standard 62.1 recognizes this enhanced contaminant removal by awarding a ventilation effectiveness factor of 1.2 to UFAD systems whose projection to 50 feet per minute does not exceed 4.5 feet. The same is awarded to thermal displacement ventilation systems. Projection beyond this level captures contaminants within the occupied zone and thus is assigned an effectiveness factor of 1.0, that which is also awarded to overhead cooling systems. In conclusion, let's summarize a few points to consider when designing UFAD systems. First, design for plenum pressures between 0.05 and 0.1 inches, which will minimize plenum leakage and diffuser noise. Secondly, Pay close attention to plenum ceiling, especially at its vertical boundaries, to avoid type 2 leakage. Be aware of thermal decay and have a plan to minimize its effect. This may include using air highways or decouple perimeter cooling systems like passive chill beams or fan coils. Finally, utilize high induction swirl type diffusers to limit vertical projection of the supply air to minimize space airflow rates and maximize 
ventilation of the space. Thank you for taking a time out with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check back on our website for other time out podcasts.